everyone. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Hope everyone is having a great start to their week. Um, we're halfway through the week. So even if you're not having a good start to your week, two more days left until the weekend. So um, funny thing that happened. I just recorded Well, I thought I recorded this video and then I had some technical difficulties. So I recorded a fabulous video with some great content. But then I realized that it didn't record and I'm on a time crunch because I have to get to the airport. Again, if you are watching this video or if you've watched Friday's videos and Monday's videos, I recorded all these videos on Friday because I'm going out of town and I'm on a time crunch to get to the airport. Like I need to be leaving within the next 30 seconds. So I have about 30 seconds to record this video. But um, so I really don't have any time to like parlay or whatever. But Hope everyone is having a great start to their week. Let's get right into today's video. As always, God is blessing us. He's always going to be blessing us. Today, we are talking about um, signs and symptoms of an emotionally healthy person and an emotionally unhealthy person or just someone that needs help in that emotional, in their emotional health. And just for time's sake, because I... In the first video, I spent a lot of time talking about the person that's emotionally intelligent and emotionally aware. For time's sake, I cannot do that. I'll get back to you guys on with that on Friday. But for to me, I've identified two types of people. There are people that are overly emotional, um, which those are the people that are like, and it doesn't have to just necessarily be crying because I've gotten into arguments about with people about that. Like if I call you emotional, I don't mean that you're like crying or you're like super lovey-dovey, but it could be displayed as passion. Like I have a couple people in my life that are very passionate. So when they talk, it may seem like they're being aggressive, but they're not. They're just very passionate about what they're saying. So those are emotional people too. But in that same breath, like those people also sometimes have to watch of being too passionate or overly emotional. So the example that I used was with my brother. And again, I love my brother with all my heart, all my soul. I'm the only one who can say this. So don't think that you can go back and, you know, say this because you can't. Um, but my brother is a very passionate, emotional person. Sometimes, though, people take it a little too far and argue points that don't need to be argued or argue... Um, you know, literally, if you've had a conversation with him, like, he'll argue, doesn't matter the place, doesn't matter what he's talking about, doesn't matter anything. Like, if he wants to have an argument, it's just like, well, here we go. Here we go. Um, but then there are people um, like me who I would consider myself, um, I don't think that I'm emotionally unhealthy, but I think that I can benefit from being more emotional in certain situations because there are a lot of times where I will feel some type of way about a situation or about a person and how they've affected me and I'll just suppress that emotion and just be like you know what whatever just move on when honestly that's not living a healthy life if someone is has affected your emotions where you're feeling some type of way towards that person um then you should be expressing it and of course I know this but do you think I'm taking my own advice right so um so yeah on Friday I'll have a more meaty um video on friday that'll talk a little bit more in depth so i apologize because i really do have to go to the airport but um on friday we'll talk about um whether you're on the end of the spectrum where you're overly emotional or whether you're on the other end of the spectrum where you're under you're underly emotional you're not as emotional both of those areas or both of those ends are have some signs and symptoms of being emotionally unhealthy or having um, needing some work in their emotional health. So right in the middle is where we should be. And that is where emotional intelligence comes into play. So on Friday, we'll talk more in depth about emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence and what we can do just to live more emotionally healthy lives and some things that we can, um, put into practice now. That way, when we come into different situations and we come in contact with different people, we are emotionally aware and emotionally intelligent of not only, um, our emotions, but how they affect our behaviors, the people around us, the environments around us, and just, our lives in general. So hope everyone is having a fabulous Wednesday. Hope you guys have a great third. In, in between like today and Friday, what would be good for you guys to do is really identify where you are on that emotional health spectrum. Like, are you too emotional or are you not emotional enough? That way, when we talk on Friday, you'll be able to um, properly identify like what steps you exactly need to do in order to get your emotional health back on track. So, so yeah, I hope everyone has a great Wednesday and a fabulous Thursday. And I will talk to you guys again on Friday. Bye.